Welcome to Birmingham City Centre for the second staging of the Great Birmingham Run. A record field of 18,000 are taking part in what is the fastest growing half marathon in the UK. And it includes an elite field that features some of the world's best distance runners. Your commentary team are Tim Hutchins and first Stuart Storey. Race start time approaching the 18,000, about to embark on a 13.1 mile journey. Of course, the elite always at the front of the field introduced first. The rest will go off in uh, waves, but the first to be introduced from Kenya is Arin Mogaka, the Commonwealth Games silver medalist on the marathon. Just being introduced by the local announcer. And of course, this. Uh, the 2010 and 2012 European 5,000 metre silver medalist from Portugal, Sera Moreira, is capable of just around about 71, 70 to 71 for the half marathon. This is former world 10,000 metre champion, world half marathon champion, twice great North Run champion, one of Ethiopia's finest, Berhan Adere. As far as the men are concerned, Tim, quite a field. It is indeed. Commonwealth champion for the marathon, John Kelly, in this lineup. Was only eighth here last year in a slow time. Looking to exercise that ghost is the uh, Kenyan. Up against him, though, the former world record holder, also from Kenya, at 10 kilometres on the road, Mika Kogo. He's a 59.07 man at the half marathon. He will provide stout resistance to this man. Last year, Haile Gabriel Selassie won this race. This year, they have the man who two weeks ago took his fourth world half marathon title, Zelsne Tadesi of Eritrea. He's the outstanding favourite. He's the world record holder for the half marathon. And he's racing now on the streets of Birmingham. Well, the starter, Robbie Grabatz, bronze medalist in the high jump in the Olympic Games, those magnificent uh, Olympic Games, uh, which, of course, uh, captivated the attention of the whole nation and the world, in fact. And it's interesting at this point just to mention that tomorrow the city's hosting their 2012 Sports Summit at Edgebaston, uh, discussing how they can create a real Olympic legacy. So. The panel includes the chief exec officers of UK Athletics and British Cycling and former Olympians Wendy Sly and Brendan Foster involved too. Well, that's about the Olympics, and uh, Robbie's got them underway, and he'll get the uh, waves of runners underway. We've mentioned they're in waves. They're, they're, they're arranged in waves uh, according to their ability. It's a mixed race, this, so we'll catch the... Uh, women competitors in the, in the midst of the men as they go forth, the waves now being processed at the start and of course personal stopwatches will be clicked we've heard too that there are all sorts of charities here being run for loads and loads of money being raised and there are some competitions involved as well there are company competitions uh, small companies large companies there are all sorts of events within this event here uh, today it's a very special occasion it's the great Birmingham run second year it's the biggest half marathon in the Midlands of course and uh, the thousands come to 18,000, bigger than last year, 15 last year. And uh, really it is, it composes of uh, athletes from clubs, but those who are doing this for the very first time. There's Robbie. What a great season he had, equaling the uh, Steve Smith's uh, British high jump record at 237. I mean, it was a great, great performance, but to get the bronze medal in the Olympic Games, he emerged uh, last season just at the right time. They start just off Paradise, so you saw that, then along Dudley Street, Sherlock Street, down Pershall Road, Bourneville at five miles, turn back along Pershall Road. There are one or two uphills between four and five and ten and twelve. Then eight miles turn right, loop back, and then on to Edgebaston Road. Then at ten miles left across Sherlock Street, then they loop back right through the 11 to 12 miles towards the finish in Broad Street. But this is uh, now beginning to spread out significantly, and it's all down to the pace of the Frenchman. Well, yeah, I mean, Pefta has thrown the gauntlet down. He's a 27-and-a-half-minute man for 10,000 on the track. He's not only a 2.09 marathon runner and very strong, he has pretty good speed, but he's determined to make this quick. Goes through one mile there in, what, about 4.33? That very, very quick pace indeed. They're heading for under the hour if they can maintain anything like this uh, tempo. But he's reduced it down to, what, six or eight runners very, very quickly indeed, the Frenchman. Kogo there in the yellow in second place, remember, former world record holder for the uh, 10K on the roads, looking very, very relaxed indeed, and I'm, I'm impressed with his form so far. 
let's just try and catch up a little bit with the, well all the principals are there Marere is there Adiri is there and uh, in fact they're all there all those that we introduced to you Magaki in the pink strip that's a Marera just going by that shot Stuart, it does look like they've set off at a very very uh, modest pace I have to say if it were the uh, Porter Radcliffe racing in her pomp, her pomp they'd be going a lot lot quicker than this I can assure you but Marera there It'll be interesting to see how she goes. She's a growing force against the very experienced Adairi. Look at the wonderful smooth gait of uh, Mika Koko. He looks so good, doesn't he? De Desse in uh, third place. Kelly is there, and so is the Frenchman. Also um, hanging on at the moment. Mefta, he set that early pace, didn't he? And then dropped away, and now he's come back up. So this is quite a nice group. I'm glad to see a group here because they can work off each other. Well, he's five away, but Kogo very much uh, in control, isn't he? Not glancing around him to see what sort of damage he's doing in these early stages. They haven't been running very long, but, uh, what, ten minutes on the clock? They've only gone through, through two miles a minute or so back. But uh, interesting to see the, the body language and the psychology unfolding here. Kogo very, very much in control. Marrera now leading, and uh, she's got ahead of that group of males, so with that good, with the dairy alongside her, as you can see. And uh, that's that's good to see. She held the African record, Adairi, incidentally, for 10,000 metres, 34.18, set at the 2003 World Championships. She advanced very, very quickly and became one of Ethiopia's finest over the years. And now, as you suggested, perhaps in her twilight years, in terms of her running, but still a real handful in these uh, road races. Well, they've just gone through two miles, Stuart, in about 11.26. It's, it's very slow indeed. Marrera, you saw there, just checking her watch. I'm sure she's more accustomed as a Portuguese to kilometre splits, but nonetheless, she'll have done the uh, the maths, I'm sure. I think they, they look, you're looking at, what, 75? Oh, yeah, that's 74, 75 yeah. pace at the moment. They really do need to start uh, turning, cranking it up a little bit to make this a respectable run. The men, by contrast, are heading for something around 59, 59 and a half minutes, the tempo they're moving at, but the, uh, the ladies here, very tepid so far. By contrast, the men's race is fast and furious. Look at the damage it's done to the Commonwealth champion there in black, Kelai. Well, back at the start, the athletes in their waves still making their way over that start line. There's so many age groups, all age groups, all shapes and sizes, and that uh, is something that this sport can give an opportunity to. I have a feeling now that unless, unless Tedesse can uh, bridge this gap here, then I think that he's a beaten man today. The world record holder certainly may well be suffering from the uh, toils of two weeks ago and those legs very tired indeed. But you can never discount him because he is a finisher and he doesn't uh, lose very well. I, re I remember watching him, as I said before, in, in Mombasa winning the, the World Cross Country Championships in such heat. Um, he won it so well on that very hot day. He is looking tired, though, Stuart, isn't he? Now, yep. I haven't seen Kogo look round yet, but I think he will sense that Tedesse is beginning to lose contact here and there. He's certainly working very hard. He arrived on Thursday night after a, a long delay at immigration, apparently, Tedesse, and I wonder whether or not that's just the sort of little inconvenience that has piled one fatigue on top of another, and uh, if he is suffering here... In the women's race, they look to me as though they're running around about 75-minute pace. It's not quick at all. But nevertheless, it becomes uh, down to a competitive race. Marere is there. Yeah. Marere's first international competition was the European Under-23 Championships. She's a steeplechaser on the track, which is quite interesting. 16th place in the World Cross Country Champion in 2009. The Portuguese women uh, took the bronze on that day. But the big three is still there. Yeah, and that's a clear indication for my money, Stuart, that they really have gone out very, very slowly. I mean, almost 22 minutes on the clock, and they're loping along there. You could throw a blanket over the three of them. Oh, there's Tedesi. Well, he's not out of this yet, is he? He's come back to them. <laughs> well, that's extraordinary. Just beyond five-mile mark there. So 
This is still on. It looked as though it had gone at one stage, but he's now coming back to them, and that's a good sign, so that we now have three in the race. Well, the move still moving now at about 4.35, 4.37 tempo. They've gone through five miles in about 22.58. Uh, but it's no wonder that that sort of elastic is stretching between the world record holder and the two in front of him, Stuart, because they really are tanking along now. They went through five kilometres in just outside 14 minutes, uh, four miles in 18.24, which is about 4.36 tempo. They're on schedule for something around 59.40 still. They've maintained this pace well.